So I know I normally start my videos out by my hot tub, but today's kind of a drizzly, rainy day. So I'm doing the best we can because there's no excuses in rock and roll or in hot tubbing. So the video must go on. We're doing it from right here, right now. And I also know that normally my videos are about owning, maintaining, repairing, hot tubs and treating the water but in this video today we're getting into the 23 crucial things that you've got to know before you buy your very first hot tub things like is there a best time of year to do that how much are they going to cost what's the ongoing cost and which kind is better than another we're getting into all of that and a whole lot more like i said 23 of the top questions things that you're going to need to know before you buy your very first hot tub. So let's get into it. So the first question is what kind of hot tub should you get? And that might seem like an obvious question, or you might be thinking, well, how many kinds are there? There's actually three different kinds of hot tubs, one of which has two styles. So first there are in-ground hot tubs. These are the kind that are poured usually with concrete and rebar, just like you would a swimming pool that is in-ground. And those are obviously going to be the most expensive kinds of hot tubs. Then you've got so-called portable hot tubs like mine back there. It's not really all that portable, trust me. But they are called portable hot tubs. And I mentioned two different kinds. The portable hot tub has some that can be plugged into a regular wall outlet. Those are called 110 volt hot tubs. Sometimes 120 volt is the name. I'm not an electrician and I don't play one on TV. But they also can be called plug and play hot tubs. Or that same style of hot tub can be hardwired to a junction box. I don't know why I said it that way. Hardwired, hardwired, hardwired to a junction box that then gets connected to your electrical panel. And uh, that is called a 220 or a 240 volt hot tub. Electricians can be fickle, I guess. Anyway, so the portable hot tubs have two different styles. Then the third kind of course, is going to be an inflatable hot tub. And before you completely knock those, there are actually some that are pretty decent that can hold upwards of six people and are only hundreds of dollars as opposed to thousands of dollars. Most people watching this video, though, are probably looking at a portable hot tub, kind of like the one that I have. And that's what most of the questions are going to be geared towards. But let's keep going. Next, we want to answer the question, is it okay to buy a used hot tub? And where would you even go to do that? I actually have bought a used hot tub. This one came with the house when we bought it, so it is technically a used hot tub. But at our last house before this one, I actually bought a used hot tub on Craigslist, had it delivered to my house, and then I fixed it up myself. Uh, the only thing I didn't do is run the electrical line into the, uh, the breaker panel. But I did all the other work myself, not really by choice. I just couldn't find anybody that would charging a reasonable price to do that. But you can definitely do that. I bought the hot tub for only 150 bucks. I think I spent $350 having it moved from one location to the other. Unfortunately, I spent about 700 bucks on the electrical work that needed to be done. And then I ended up replacing the heater, the pump, and the blower. All of that was probably $1,000. So in the end, I did not save anywhere near as much money as I hoped that I would, but I did definitely save some. And more importantly, once it was up and running uh, through a lot of elbow grease on my part, it was a great thing to have for myself and for my family and who all love soaking in the hot tub. But you can definitely do that. Just be a little smarter about it than I was. The next question is, do you need a concrete slab to put your hot tub on? And the short answer is no. You do not have to have your hot tub on a concrete pad. In fact, of the four different hot tubs that I have owned, only one of those was actually on a concrete pad. There are all kinds of different options. We're gonna talk about some of them in just a second, but no, you do not have to pour concrete to find a place for your hot tub to go. You do need to have a place that is solid and level, and I mean completely level, but there are many options to do that. Let's get into them now. So 
So I don't think you can see the bottom of my hot tub, but my hot tub is currently sitting on my deck. I'm standing on my deck, then the deck steps down a little bit. That is intentional. A hot tub full of water and people can be upwards of 4,000 pounds. That's a lot of weight to put on a deck. So the lower the deck is to the ground, the more it can support that kind of weight without additional support underneath. Uh, my deck is actually supported additionally under the hot tub area too though, but the lower to the ground it is, the less of that you need. Aside from decks and aside from concrete slabs, you can also put a hot tub on pavers. You just need to prepare the ground properly first. You dig up the grass with a shovel, you dig down about six inches probably, and you'd put down a level, uh, a layer of like gravel probably, and then you'd put the pavers on top of that. You can also set the hot tub directly on the gravel too, that's fine. The primary thing you need to do is make sure you're not putting the hot tub directly on ground or grass and whatever you set it on needs to be perfectly level. That's for a few reasons, but most importantly, you don't want the hot tub to be heavier on one side than another. That can cause the shell to crack. It can also cause the two by fours, which make up the bulk of the frame underneath, to crack because they're designed to distribute that 4,000 pounds equally across the whole thing. And when it's not level, that can cause stress fractures because too much weight is built up in one particular area and not evenly distributed. Another good question is, are saltwater hot tubs better? A saltwater hot tub uses a saltwater generator and it basically adds sodium into the water, but it's not going to taste or smell like ocean water. It's not nearly that salty. It's a very mild kind of sensation. And it also doesn't mean that you never add any chemicals to it. You just add fewer chemicals than you would normally. So a saltwater generator allows you to use less chemicals on an ongoing basis. That saves you money there, but also because you're not using chlorine or bromine as often and in as large a quantity, it's gentler on the skin. So it is a good way to go. Just know that salt water systems do typically add to the cost, maybe a couple hundred bucks. You can though, however, add an aftermarket salt water system to your existing hot tub at any point in the future. And I have an article on my website that goes into greater detail on that. The question everybody wants to know is, what is the best hot tub for the money? And I wish I had a million dollar answer for you. Unfortunately, I don't. There are a lot of great hot tub companies out there. They all have their pros and their cons. There's Jacuzzi, the company that practically invented the portable hot tub as we know it. Jacuzzi uh, was founded by a bunch of brothers named the Jacuzzi Brothers, go figure. And Jacuzzi, and there's another company called Sundance. These days, those two companies are exactly the same. So if you go on one website or the other, you're pretty much gonna see the same thing. But they're both good quality reputable companies. There's also Master Spa, like my hot tub here, and there's Hot Spring Spas, which is another great one. I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about why I especially like them in a minute. But there are a lot of good companies out there. There's also companies that make hot tubs you can buy at places like Costco. I'm also going to get into more detail on that in a second too. Just know that those companies tend to be newer, a little less reputable, not necessarily bad though. It all comes down to what you like, what features you want, and what your price point is that you're looking at. And we're going to get into all that and more in just a minute. So let's keep diving in. All right, everyone, get out your calendars because yes, there is a better time of year to buy a hot tub than any other time throughout the year. You may have already guessed it, but just like with buying a car, the end of the year, what they call the fourth quarter, which is basically late September through late December, is the absolute best time of year to buy a hot tub. Why is that? Well, just like with cars, the hot tub showroom, the hot tub salespeople are wanting to get rid of everything that they currently have on hand that they've had all year. Why is that? Because the hot tub companies are sending them new hot tubs, the next year's models. It's the exact same thing with a car. They want to get rid of everything that they're sitting on that they've had all year so they can get have plenty of room for all the new stuff coming in. So that's when they're going to be more flexible on price, more willing to negotiate, and more willing to throw in extras and 
and freebies and accessories to get you out the door with your new hot tub. So unless you're absolutely completely impatient, which I can be, uh, and you have that money burning a hole in your wallet, wait until at least late September, if not a little bit later, to walk into that hot tub showroom ready to buy. You will save money. I can pretty much guarantee it. Now I sound like a used hot tub salesman. So now that we've covered the best time of year to buy a hot tub, what's a good price to pay for a hot tub? Well, again, we're, we're going to talk mostly about port, so-called portable hot tubs. They're not very portable in my mind. I have tried to move one before. But for portable hot tubs, you're going to have four different kind of price tiers and then a low and a high range for each of those. So for a basic entry level model, you're looking at somewhere between $2,000 and $4,000. These are gonna be low frills or no frills. They're probably gonna be a plug and play style that just plugs right in, can have fewer jets, fewer water features, no sound system or anything like that. Basic, but very nice. Any hot tub is gonna be better than none, right? So the next level up from that is kind of a mid-level. That's going to be somewhere between $5,000, maybe $8,000. You may have a waterfall. You might have a little LED light system. It's not getting super fancy yet, but it's nicer than that entry-level model. And it probably at least gives you the option of doing the plug-and-play or the hardwiring. Some of the best ones allow you to do either one, which is great. You can start off with the plug and play, and then later, when you have a little bit of money saved up, pay an electrician to come out and wire it up to your breaker panel. That'll save you a little bit of money on your electric bill, and it'll make your hot tub a little bit more powerful. The next level is kind of a high level, which is probably what my, my hot tub is. Like I said, this hot tub was here when I bought the house. It's probably coming up on 10 years old, I would guess, but it was probably a higher end hot tub when the previous owners of this house bought it. And a higher end hot tub like this, like I said, probably gonna be somewhere between 9,000, maybe $12,000, somewhere in that range. And then you have the luxury hot tubs. These are the Cadillacs of hot tubs, somewhere between 13, $18,000, maybe even more. We're talking sound systems, we're talking light uh, LED light shows, we're talking, you know, Bluetooth and maybe even programmable from an, a phone, an app on your phone. I don't know. Maybe maybe they cook dinner for you. Who knows? But they're fancy, and those are the luxury end. So, so like I said, four different tiers and a low low end and a high end price range. For most people buying their first hot tub, you're probably going to spend somewhere between four to six thousand dollars, maybe seven thousand at the most. So what is the most reliable brand of hot tub? Well, there's not a clear answer on that, just like there's not a clear answer on what is the best hot tub for the money. A lot of those well-known brands have been around a long time. They've been trusted for a long time. They've built up a decent reputation and they have a decent warranty. Again, those companies would be Jacuzzi or Sundance. And again, that's technically the same company these days. Jacuzzi bought Sundance. And then there's Master Spa, there's Hot Spring Spas. Uh, and there's, there's several others. What I like to do when I'm shopping around, first of all, if I don't know the brand, I'm going to want to see some unbiased reviews. And, and that's not always available when you just Google it. You may find people that are trying to sell hot tubs who have reviews on their site, and you don't necessarily know if those are legit or not. So I would check the Better Business Bureau website first, see what kind of reviews are on there, look at the complaints, and, and, and really look at the really bad ones. But sometimes when you read bad reviews, you realize, well, this person really, they bought the wrong hot tub for what they were looking for, or they're clueless and they have no idea how to use it, and they're leaving a bad review because of their own ignorance more than the product being faulty. So look at those reviews and really scrutinize and see if the problems those people are having are problems that you would likely have also, because they may not be. But like I said, go with a trusted brand that's been around for a while, a company that's been around at least 15, 20, 30 years. They've got a lot of experience making hot tubs, and they've got a lot of customers out there who are loyal to them, and they value their reputation. Some fly-by-night company that just builds their hot tubs in China um, that hasn't been around for very long and may not be around for very long, they don't necessarily care about repeat customers and word of mouth and things like that. So think about that when you're looking into and researching your hot tub purchase.
As funny as it might seem, a lot of people are confused by the terms jacuzzi, hot tub, and spa. And they want to know, well, what's the difference between those things? And the truth is that if you're talking about a portable hot tub, there's no difference. Jacuzzi is simply a brand name. And like I mentioned, the Jacuzzi brothers who started that company pretty much invented the portable hot tub as we know it today. But it is just a brand name. So if somebody says, oh, we're going to get in my jacuzzi, they just mean we're going to get in my hot tub. And the word spa can also mean hot tub, but of course it may also refer to a place that you go for a mineral bath treatment or facial and things like that too. But if somebody says, hey, do you want to hop in the spa? Do you want to hop in the jacuzzi? Or do you want to hop in the hot tub? They're all talking about the same thing. Three words, same thing. So I should just shave this part of my goatee so I just have a cheesy mustache and maybe wear a cheesy hat and a cheesy suit and pretend to be a hot tub salesman, but I'm not going to do that. And if you are a hot tub salesman, no offense, I'm just trying to have a little fun here. But my next question is, can you negotiate hot tub prices? And the short answer is yes. Hot tubs can get marked up as much as 100%. So that means if they bought it for $2,000, they're probably going to slap a $4,000 price tag on it in the showroom. And there's nothing wrong with profit. There's nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong with paying your overhead and your expenses. I'm not trying to dog a capitalist system. Uh, we all follow a capitalist system if you're watching this video in the United States. But that does mean that there's going to be some wiggle room, especially, like I mentioned earlier, if you're buying it later in the year between late September and late December. There is going to be wiggle room there as they want to get rid of the hot, the hot tubs that are in their showroom to make room for the new ones. But no matter when you buy a hot tub, you can always negotiate. The worst that the salesperson's going to say is no. But if they don't negotiate on price, maybe they'll throw in a few extras. Maybe they'll throw in uh, some steps or an extra filter or your first round of chemicals or something. You can always negotiate. Worst thing they're gonna say is no, and then you have a choice of either to say yes or go check out somewhere else. Another question that people have are Costco hot tubs any good? After all, most of us have a Costco or maybe a Sam's Club membership, and it's easy to walk in there and they have hot tubs available. So are those things any good? Uh, and the answer is, yeah, they're probably pretty decent. Uh, I've looked at the reviews on Costco's website for the hot tubs that they have. They have brand names that you're probably not going to recognize. Aquaterra and OC Hot Tubs are, are a couple they have. I think also um, Bullfrog is another one. That one's probably a little better known than the others. Uh, and generally speaking, they all have decent reviews. Uh, as of the time of this recording, the one that had the lowest reviews overall was OC Hot Tubs. I think they had one that was two and a half stars. So if I were buying one from Costco right now, uh, I would probably dig in a little deeper than that, but I would probably steer clear of that one based on the current reviews. But reviews do change over time, um, so it's always a good idea to look at reviews, maybe from a couple of different sites to get a bigger picture. And again, I like to check the Better Business Bureau website to look at the reviews of the company at large overall. Unfortunately, none of the brands that I currently saw on the Costco website today have Better Business Bureau pages. That's not necessarily a red flag, but it probably does mean that they're newer companies that have not been around very long, they're not established. Um, but it also means that nobody's lodged a complaint with the Better Business Bureau also. So kind of a double-edged sword, but if you can get a hot tub at Costco for two, three, four, maybe 5,000 at the most, why not if it's a decent hot tub, has the features you like, uh, and is the right size and, and obviously the right price. So the next question people have, because we know buying a hot tub can be expensive, is how expensive is a hot tub to maintain on an ongoing basis? And the primary expenses you're going to have maintaining a hot tub are filters and chemicals. And chemicals, I've got other videos that dive deep into what chemicals you need and how to maximize your chemicals and to save money on chemicals. So go check out some of my other videos to dive deep into that. Uh, I've also got videos on my filters as well. But just to touch on it briefly, my hot tub has two filters. Each of those probably costs about 40 bucks each. 
Now, you're going to replace your filters between every 12 months and every 24 months. That's a pretty big range, so why such a big range? Well, if you're doing a good job of, of maintaining your water chemistry and changing your water as frequently as you need to and cleaning your filters, you can probably get two years of life out of your filter before you need to buy a new one. I take my filters out about every three weeks or so and I spray them off with a kitchen sprayer in the kitchen sink. Then I do a deep chemical soak of those filters using one of those five gallon buckets from Home Depot about every three months or so. Doing that, maintaining water chemistry and changing the water as frequently as I should, I can probably get two years of life out of those. The other big expense, aside from chemicals, and I should say that the, the chemicals, probably 20, 30 bucks a month uh, is about right for that. The other big expense is obviously the electricity that it takes to run your hot tub. Most people spend between $20 and $30 a month added to their electric bill because of a hot tub. Plug and play hot tubs sometimes can cost a little bit more. I've had somebody comment on this channel before that that's not true. I'm not an electrician and I don't play one on TV, so I don't really know, but it makes sense to me that a plug and play style, which is 110 volt as opposed to a 220 volt and has a less efficient system to heat the water, it makes sense to me that it would cost a little bit more. Probably not significantly though. The big difference would be how well insulated your hot tub is, the insulation that's underneath your hot tub shell and behind the panels, and then the, t the temperature of the air. I live in Texas. It doesn't get that cold in the wintertime. If I lived in Minnesota, though, and I'm trying to heat this thing to 104, you can bet that's going to cost more money than it does heating this thing to 98 in July in Texas. So those two things will affect the overall range, maybe as much as 50 bucks a month using that Minnesota soda in winter example, but 20 to 30 bucks a month is more the norm. Now I've mentioned the plug and play style hot tubs a couple of times, the 110 volt. And the next question people have is, are those any good? Mine is a 220 volt, sometimes called a 240 volt, that has to be hardwired to a junction box, which then gets connected to an electrical panel. Um, I've never actually owned one that just plugs in, but I love the idea of the convenience. I have also researched those for articles on my website, so I do know a little bit about the plug and play style. I know that generally they're going to be less expensive. You can get a quality one for as little as $2,000 and somewhere between three and $4,000 can get you a really nice one. I'm going to link to my favorite one in the description below that you can actually get on Amazon with free shipping. And the really cool thing about those, especially the one I'm going to link to, is that they can later be converted to a 220 volt hot tub. So down the, the line, you, you buy it, you plug it in, but later you've got a little bit extra money. You want to go ahead and make it more energy efficient and more powerful. You can go pay an electrician to wire it up to a 220 volt system. That's a great option to have and the one I'm linking to does have that option. But generally speaking, yes, 110 volt hot tubs are a nice, inexpensive, affordable, entry-level hot tub. So if that's what you're looking for, you can definitely find that. The one that I like on Amazon that I, like I said, I'm, I'm linking to it down below is from Essential Hot Tubs. They make several different makes and models in different sizes, different price ranges. They have a ton of them though that are well under $4,000. So it's a great way to go if you're, if you have a small budget, but you still want a quality hot tub, something that's nicer than an inflatable hot tub. Now, piggybacking onto that conversation about the 110 volt hot tubs, a lot of people want to know, can I just plug it into any electrical outlet? And the short answer is no. It needs to be what's called a GFCI breaker outlet. In other words, it's going to be an outlet that has one of those little push buttons right in the center that's basically a little breaker so that if there's any sort of electrical disruption, any water gets splashed into the outlet itself, it's going to trip in just like a 20th of a second, which is enough time to save your life. So it has to be plugged into one of those for safety reasons and for city code reasons as well. Generally speaking, a lot of the time, houses that have outlets on the outside, they're going to be GFCI breakers by default because they're battling the elements like rain and snow. So they're probably, your outlet on the outside of the house is probably going to be one of those anyway. If it's not, it's a fairly easy fix to swap out for a GFCI breaker. And again, if it's outside the house, it ideally needs to have one of those plastic covers 
that keeps it secure from the weather as well. But that's the kind of outlet you need. It does need to be a 15 amp breaker, but unless your house was built in the 1800s, chances are it has a 15 amp breaker, if not a 20 or more, already there. But those are the main requirements for plugging in a hot tub. The other thing you want to consider is most of these hot tubs have a 15 foot cord and you don't want to use an extension cord on there. So make sure you're placing it close enough to where you can plug it in without needing an extension cord. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier when I was talking about the ongoing expenses of a hot tub and how often should you change the water in your hot tub? It's a great question. The answer is about every three months. Now, it depends on how frequently you use it and how good a job you do of maintaining the chemicals in the water. If you do a good job of maintaining the chemicals and it's just you and you only use it a couple times a week, you could probably go four months, maybe even five months before changing the water. Uh, if you're having people shower before they get in to rinse off like oils and chemicals and not chemicals really, but like cologne and deodorant and body lotions and things like that. If you're having them shower before they get in, that also helps keep the water purer. So again, you could probably extend that up to maybe four or five months. But generally speaking, about every three months is about right and then you, you're just going to drain it, you're going to clean it out, you're going to wipe it down, you're going to refill it and, and treat the water all over again, and you're going to be good to go. All right, now that we've covered how often you're going to want to change your water, the next question you're going to have, both the first time you fill it up and every time you change it, is how long does it take to heat up after you've filled it back up again? And the answer to that is somewhere between three hours and eight hours. There's a few factors that determine how long that's going to take. I do have some other videos that go into greater detail on this question, so look for those on my channel. But just know that the garden hose temperature of your, the water that you're using to fill it up with, that can vary anywhere from 60 degrees up to 75 degrees. That's going to affect how long it takes. Also the weather. It's not that hot today here in Texas in June, but in July, if I'm filling this up and it's 110 out, that's going to take less time to heat up than if I was filling it up in Minnesota in December. So those, the weather and the climate of where you live is going to be another factor. Also, keep the lid on. Even when it's beastly hot here in Texas, I still keep the lid on. That's because it traps the heat inside and allows it to stay in the water instead of evaporating into the air. Also, turn on every jet and water feature you, that you have. That's just going to circulate the water and eliminate cold pockets and get that water moving through the heater tube faster. That's going to affect the, how long it takes as well. And now the million dollar question. How much value does a hot tub add to your house? And the shorter answer is unless you're having an in-ground one put in, in which case you're probably also adding an in-ground pool, it's not really gonna add to the value of your house. So don't buy one with the intent of raising the value of your property. Buy one because you love it and you and your family and friends are gonna use it. An in-ground hot tub will definitely add some value, although not probably dollar for dollar what you paid for it. Of the four hot tubs that I've owned, this is one, but of the three previous houses where I had hot tubs, two of the, the times when I sold the house, the people either removed the hot tub right after we bought it, or they had me do it before they agreed to buy it from me. So. The, value, the hot tub only added value in one of those three transactions. And they actually insisted that I make sure it was perfect working condition, which it was. But of the three times that I have sold houses with hot tubs, it only added value in the eyes of the buyer one time, but did not affect the selling price. So I mentioned ongoing expenses earlier in the video. Another common question that people have, really a common misconception, is they think that turning the temperature down or maybe even flipping the hot tub off after they get out every time is somehow going to save them money on their electricity bill specifically. And the answer to that is definitely not. You are not going to save any money on your electricity bill by raising and lowering the temperature on a regular basis or shutting your hot tub off on a regular basis. What you're doing is you're causing that heater to have to constantly be cycling back and forth. It draws more energy to heat the water than it does to maintain the water. 
So always keep your hot tub set where you like it. Keep the cover on there when you're not using it. And that's how you're going to save the most amount of money. The only exception I would say is if you're going to go away for a few months. Let's say you have a winter home where you have a hot tub. You're going to want to winterize that hot tub and then drain it and turn it off. That way it's not wasting electricity unnecessarily. But unless you're going to be gone, I'd say at least three weeks, just leave your hot tub set as is. That's going to be the best way to save money on your electric bill. And now my final tip. How long do hot tubs last? After all, you're spending anywhere probably $4,000, maybe ten dollars or $15,000. That's a decent amount of money, at least in my wallet. So how long is this thing going to last? Just know that on average, a hot tub, and again, I'm talking about a portable hot tub, not inflatable and not in-ground, a portable hot tub like this one is on average going to last about 15 years. What are some of the things that you can do to maximize or maybe even exceed that? Well, keeping your water maintained chemically is a great thing to do. That keeps scale buildup from happening. It eliminates biofilm in the water, which are fungus and bacteria. Also changing the water on a regular basis is a great way to keep all of the equipment functioning well. You can use a protectorant on your cover to keep that in great condition. The sun is the number one enemy of hot tub covers. Also, a hot tub cover lifter. I have a great video on how to use a hot tub cover lifter. You're going to want to see that because you are going to want a hot tub cover lifter. These things can be upwards of 75 pounds. And if you're just pushing it off the edge, like we used to do at my last house where I didn't have a cover lifter, that's going to put excess wear and tear on the cover and require you to have to buy a new one. I know it's not the same as buying a new hot tub, but a cover could still be 600 bucks. So that's part of the hot tub and extending the life of everything, including the cover, is crucial. So use a hot tub cover lifter and use some protectorant from time to time on the cover itself. But those are the main things that you can do to maximize the life of your hot tub. Also, as I mentioned quite a while earlier in the video, it's not really that hard to change out, say, the heater tube or the pump or the blower and to fix leaks. So when those things fail, and they will eventually fail, don't think that's the end of that hot tub and that you just have to buy a new one. You could probably fix those things yourself with a little ingenuity and a little elbow grease. So once again, on a kind of dreary, wet day here at my house, my name is Jeff Campbell. This is my channel, Hot Tub Owner HQ. I also have my website, hottubownerhq.com. And if you're looking for tips on either how to buy a hot tub or how to maintain one that you've already purchased, you're going to want to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification button, and please give me a thumbs up for this video. It's a great way to tell YouTube that other hot tub owners just like you need to see this video. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.